The EIWA tournament this year was one of our best showings we've had since I've been here, um, placing three guys in heaven, uh, guys score points. Uh, Josh Young and Anthony Mancini scoring points were huge for us. And we had a couple guys close, too, we went in some close matches in overtime. Um, you know, Scott uh, Stevens did a great job. He, had, he, he beat guys that he lost to earlier in the season. Um, that's all progress. And thing, thing, uh, same thing with Mancini, beating um, guys that he lost to. And that's what we're looking for at the end of the season, um, is performing well, um, even if they're losing, closing that gap on those guys that they lost, and hopefully um, changing those losses to wins. And I think we did that at some of those weight classes. But it was exciting you know, to move the team up in that in the, the standings last year, we were last in the standings and uh, didn't take anyone to the NCAA tournament and didn't get anyone to the next day. And we kind of had a long talk after that tournament. And you know, 12 months later, you know, uh, the guys who committed and put time in and, and worked hard, um, I think you saw some of the um, fruits of all their work over the summer and throughout the season. I had a good tournament. Um, I felt really good. I was clicking on all parts. Um, you know, and I came a long way since the beginning of the season. And, uh, you know, we were really working on, I was working with Coach Rogers and Coach Alton, you know, like heavy hand fighting and more, more like opening up on my feet and wrestling my matches. And uh, we really wanted to try to stick to that game plan rather than close up and, you know, win those one point matches that I was doing the second half of the season. And, uh, you know, being a little less conservative, I was going out there and scoring more points, getting more takedowns. And uh, really a, a big thing out there is uh, when you're wrestling like top competition like this is not overlooking anybody and really um, going out to each match with the same mindset, whether it's the first round or the finals. I opened up my first match against the six seed uh, Ray O'Donnell and um, I had a close match. I lost some three nothing. Uh, I'd lost some earlier in the year and I felt confident going in that it would be close and you know if I did things the right way and fix some of the minor details in the last match I could come out on top but uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to do so so uh, I found myself in the wrestlebacks uh, trying to battle my way back and it was a tough road but I've been there often um, many times actually in my career and I kind of you know I'm comfortable wrestling back you know clearing my head. The finals match against Preston um, I wrestled him before so we really knew what we were going up against. We didn't need to do too much scouting. We had already done that before when uh, when our dual meet against them. And uh, yeah, so I just really wanted to open up my feet more. The first match we wrestled, was two, I won two nothing. So it was an escape and a ride out. And I really wanted to open up more on my feet and get some takedowns. And um, you know, him coming out first in the beginning uh, and getting a quick takedown, I think was actually uh, good because it kind of woke me up and I had to get my motor going. Wanted to keep wrestling smart through that whole match, you know, not giving up any stupid points, but also keeping my offense going at the same time and uh, wrestling through till the end of it. My last match of the second day was against the uh, the five seed um, from Columbia, and I had lost to him previously at, at the pit duels. And, you know, he's a returning national qualifier, and, you know, they started to get the jitters and the nerves beforehand. And, uh, you know, I just kept thinking, you know, we can come out on top here, we can come out on top here. And uh, I stayed focused and, and uh, you know, really nothing really happened until overtime. You know, I just, I felt like he was trying to work a stall call and I was, uh, you know, taking a lot of half shots and stuff, doing a really good job of pushing the pace. And I just tried to match his pace and, and you know, not give up a stall call. And uh, I remember went into overtime and, you know, I kind of hit like a fake, uh, fake uh, single or high crotch from space. and. Um, he took a bad shot, and I spun her, spun around real quick. Uh, got around the corner and uh, and scored, and moved on to the second day. To another opponent I faced in uh, earlier the year from Drexel, um, very tough kid, uh, really good on top, and you know that match I was losing my mind. Uh, you know, I re Coach Borgia really mellowed me out before that. I was you know so on edge, so nervous because I've been in that match to move on, whether it's the state tournament and to make it to day two in the tournament. And I've, and I've been on the losing side of that match and it's like the worst feeling in the world. So I tried not to dwell on it too much. Um, and Coach Borgia kind of really mentally, you know, prepared me for that beforehand. It was nothing, nothing in the first period, moving in the second period. And uh, we had talked about the night before whether we're gonna go down or not. You know, I don't think, I think, I don't know if he was expecting me to go down. I think he, he thought I was gonna stay on his feet because we, he rode me pretty tough. He's really good on top. And uh, I went down and 
he rode me for a good like 15 20 seconds we went out of bounds and then capitalized on the fresh start and got up to my feet and I probably cut away too early without clearing hands we went on like a scramble to our back and I ended up on top for reversal and he escaped and he went down in the third um and escaped again tied up to two and I didn't feel comfortable going into the ride outs um in this in the uh after the f overtime on your feet so I wanted to end it there you know and, and I found an opening got to my foot sweep and got behind him and kind of just went crazy it was probably the highlight of my entire wrestling career you know it's something I I worked really hard for this season and you know going into that tournament not a lot of people expected me probably to go to nationals but you know I knew I did I knew my my family and my teammates and coaches did and you know, I, I, it's a really big hump I had to get over for myself. And uh, after that, you know, the loss to the Hofstra kid and then upset the four seed again. Coach Rogers really put together a great schedule for us. Um, everyone that I wrestled out at conferences, I had already seen head-to-head -head matchups with dual meets. Being able to see all those guys and experiencing, you know, getting a feel for them and seeing their style of wrestling really definitely helped me out uh, with the EIWAs this year. Taking more than one guy, we haven't done that since uh, 1994, and uh, I, I think it, it showed the growth of the program. Um, Rick's now been there four years, and we've always talked about getting more than one guy out there, um, and um, having uh, Pelosi uh, join him um, at the NCAA tournament is is great for Rick, not just for Pelosi, but for Rick, because uh, you know, now you have another teammate out there. You, you know, you're excited for yourself, but you're also excited for your teammate. Um, you know, for me, some of my best memories was when my teammates were all Americans or placed at the NCAA tournament because, um, you know, you want to share that with someone else. Looking at 141, Rick's placement, you know, he's seated, I think, ninth in, in the tournament. Um, you know, he's, he's been there before. Uh, really, it's not where you're at. There's no easy route. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. You know, so if you want a lower seed or a higher seed in a different spot, a top bracket, lower bracket, it, it, you know, uh, there's – the only guarantee out there is there's going to be upsets and people are going to be placing and, and top seeds are going to be going down and, and vice versa. So um, that's the only guarantee you have at the NCAA tournament. And and Rick's been experienced enough that, you know, whoever he faces, I think he hits a Nebraska kid right off the bat. Um, then after that, it, it, who knows? You know, it you know it could play out with the way the seeds have it, which I think is good. I think style matchups, he, he matches up well with all those guys inside of the bracket. Um, and and, and plus, what Rick brings to the table, he has a lot of different weapons. So to, to prepare for Rick or to try to slow Rick down, I, he's won matches this year tight. He had to win matches and you know, uh, riding guys out, getting off the bottom, scoring late, uh, blowing matches open you know, early. Um, so there, I don't think there's any situation that he's going to experience out there at the NCAA tournament that he hasn't been in multiple times. My expectations for this year's uh, NCAA tournament I mean, they're, they're kind of the same as what they always have been. Um, I've always wanted to, you know, go out there, perform my best. And, you know, obviously the ultimate goal is always for everyone to be a national champion. And uh, I think this year is, I guess, probably my, uh, probably my best shot. You know, the weight class is wide open. Everyone's pretty close, to, uh, close together, whether it's the number one seed or the last seeded guy. You know, everyone's out there for a reason. Um, they, they earn that spot. So... You can't really take anyone lightly. You got to have the same mindset going into every match, and really just wrestle in one match at a time. Um, hopefully, from the first round up until the finals. Antonio Pelosi hits probably uh, you know the number two seed, but arguably could be one of the best guys in the weight class, and and you know potentially one of the best guys in the world. You know he's training for the you know, Snyder's training to be an Olympian, and, and and you know going out there into Brazil and in in, in a few short months. Um, but that experience, it's really your attitude when you go out there. Um, like I said before, top guys go down all the time. Um, I think what we're looking at for, for um, Antonio is what other opportunity you get to wrestle a, a world uh, quality athlete. Um, and, you know, you'd have to be in the Olympics or Worlds to wrestle someone like that. So it's just a great experience for him. So, um, and he's going out there with a positive attitude and, and do what we can. And, and you know, uh, when you're wrestling someone at that caliber, it's just exciting. You know, some guys, I think, get nervous. Some guys are a little bummed out. We're excited for it, you know. You know and, and if you're going to wrestle, might as well wrestle the best. I was dealt a relatively tough draw at the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, Kyle Snyder from Ohio State, returning world champion. Um, 
but I'm not looking at it any differently than any other match. You know, he's a really, really tough opponent, probably one of the toughest opponents I'll ever face in my entire career. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to wrestle as hard as I can for the entire match. Having the NCAAs at the Madison Square Garden in New York City just brings a different vibe to it. Um, you know, typically it's out of St. Louis or you know, the arenas are arena. You know, so we've been at the Madison Square Garden early in the season at the Grapple the Garden. So we've kind of been in that um, environment. It's going to be a totally different uh, vibe now at the NCAA tournament there. That's always a buzz and there's always another level of energy that comes with that. Um, once you get in the doors and you get on the mat, uh, it, it's going to be exciting, but it's like any other NCAA tournament. The venue doesn't really, uh, you know, make that much of a difference of it because, you know, we wrestled at um, every year. They're at big venues where professional teams play. So the stadiums are big and, you know, there's cameras, lights going on everywhere. So the atmosphere, it's pretty electric there and uh, the fans are going crazy and everything. So really, uh, this being my fourth year out there, having the experience of three uh, previous years and, you know, being in almost every round, whether it was, you know, my first year I went two and out or going into the blood round my following year and then all Americaning, all Americaning my junior year. Um, just having that, that experience really helps with your composure out there and not getting wrapped up in the overall atmosphere. I just want to thank all our supporters and, and everyone that helped get us the program to where it's at and having two guys in the NCAA tournament is, is a huge accomplishment accomplishment for not only for the program but for the assistant coaches um, that got our guys ready our support staff our trainer and all the alumni that, that help fund our program and, and allow our guys to travel and get the experience they need to get to this point um, to make it out to the NCAA tournament.